here to the nation's capital to tell the story that we've got an economic convulsion in agriculture. We got a lot of broken dreams, a lot of broken lives, a lot of broken families, and we're not going to take it any longer. No one's going to stop us. We are going to keep on marching and keep on fighting for jobs, for our community, for health care, for our children, for our families, for our country. And we're going to win on this amendment. Turn up the heat. It was five years ago today that our colleague Paul Wellstone and his wife Sheila Wellstone were killed in a plane crash in northern Minnesota. The Senate lost one of its hardest working, most respected members. He was a crusader. He was always out charging ahead on some issue that he believed in. But mostly, Mr. President, those issues were those that people needed help. There are 14 million children that are poor in our country. 14 million. These conglomerates have just muscled their way to the dinner table. They're pushing family farmers out. There is no real competition in the food industry any longer. I think that history will remember Paul Wellstone as one of the great senators of our time, not just because of his accomplishments, but more important, uh, because of the extraordinary vision that he had. I think politics is about the improvement of people's lives. It's about lessening human suffering. It's about advancing the cause of peace and justice in our world and in our country. Paul Wellstone worked bus by bus, block by block, precinct by precinct, to touch people in a way that made people believe that involvement in politics could make a real difference in their lives. Whenever an issue of moral urgency, an issue of conscience comes to the Senate floor, I still expect to look back over here in the back row and See Paul Wellstone over there, chopping his hand in the air, speaking with his passion, urging us to do the right thing. No way am I gonna support our raising our salary to $141,000 a year when this Senate and this Congress has not been willing to raise the minimum wage. Count on me as a senator to support your efforts in collective bargaining for good wages and civilized working conditions. <laughs> He never hesitated, paused, or pondered. He stepped forward. He was really a leader. If you want to reduce poverty in our country, focus on a good education. If you want to have a stable middle class, focus on a good education. If you want our country to do well in an international economy, focus on a good education. If you want women and men who can think on their own two feet and participate in democracy, focus on a good education. There were 23 of us who voted against the Iraqi war resolution. And I recall walking up to Paul Wellstone, who was in a tight election contest back in Minnesota, and saying to him, Paul, I hope this doesn't cost you the election. And he said to me, it's OK if it does. This is what I believe, and this is who I am. People of Minnesota wouldn't expect anything less. That was it, a handful of words summarizing who he was and what he believed in and what he thought politics was all about. That was the last conversation that I had with Paul Wellstone. Paul and Sheila had so much energy, and they were always on the move. They brought such enthusiasm and such joy to their work. They were animated, they were tireless, and they were persistent in their fight against injustice. He and Sheila were great partners for 39 years. They fought for women and children threatened by violence. He fought for teachers and coal miners, for veterans, for people who suffered the sting of discrimination and denial because of their race, their gender, their sexual orientation, or their physical or mental disability. We will no longer accept the stigma. We want you to end the discrimination, and we want full mental health coverage for men, women, and child in the United States of America. We can do better. No one ever wore the title Senator better or used it less. He loved it when ordinary folks, strangers, would come up to him and call him Paul. He took that as a sign that ordinary people knew he was one of them, he was approachable, and he cared. I think I'm taller than Michael J. You <laughs> <laughs> 
give him hell. I'm not, you give him. You know what? You just stole the last thing I was going to say, which is the way I looked at it. That's today. And then tomorrow, tomorrow we're here to raise heck or to raise hell or to raise the roof. And we're going to have a huge rally. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. If Paul Wellstone were here today, I know what he'd tell us. Don't give up. Don't despair. There's so many people counting on you. You've got to keep fighting. Let's do more than just honor and miss our friend today. Let's vow to stick together, pick up his fallen standard, and continue his work. I think our goal is to tell people in the country we will continue as senators to advocate for families, to advocate for consumers, to advocate for children. I am a labor senator. I'm ready to take on the pharmaceutical industry, ready to take on the health insurance industry, ready to take on the big banks, ready to take on the oil companies, because I got you. I'm a labor senator. We win by being a labor senator. Door to door, neighborhood to neighborhood, town to town. That's the way we win. Thank you all workers. Thank <laughs> you.